add tonight's notes to your utility words notes and start by copying down this conjugation chart of the verb to net to have we've talked about it you've seen it and you've been using some of these forms but let's make sure you've got them yo tengo tú tienes él ella o usted tiene nosotros tenemos ellos ellas and ustedes tienen and in spain vosotros tenéis notice how the yo form is a little weird uh, i mentioned to you it's we call these kinds of verbs yo go verbs because the yo form ends with a go and there's a few of them you'll learn more throughout the years we as we go you'll also notice that the nosotros and vosotros forms are just regular er verb conjugation forms that hemos and ace is just like you'd expect on any er verb but inside the grayed out area you'll notice that something's a little quirky while they have with the exception of the o form they have the regular er verb conjugations they have that little i snuck in there so instead of two tenes or ella tene it's tienes and tiene and of course the yo form is just off doing its own weird thing so the fact that all of those irregular uh, verb conjugations are in that part of this verb chart is why people call it a boot verb and uh, so you'll hear that around a lot they'll call them stem changing verbs or boot verbs you don't have to know much about these for now this is just a preview for you and i wanted you to kind of understand what was going on with tener in any case you have the conjugations of tener you can use them now let's see how the phrase tener que works you know that tener means to have so i can say yo tengo un libro i have a book um tu tienes un lapis you have a pencil but there are different ways we can use tener in english and also in spanish think about it in english i might say i have something i have a cookie but i can also say i have to go to school and we're not talking about possession in that case we're talking about kind of duty or necessity something i must do uh, in spanish tener to have is used in the exact same way if you follow it with the word que so to have to here's a sample in english i might say i have to eat fast you know maybe the bell just rang and you got to get to class and you're finishing up your lunch oh i have to eat fast um in spanish to say that i would start with i have yo tengo and then of course to eat fast would be comer rápido uh, in spanish we also have the glue word in this phrase que that comes in to kind of uh, bring the whole thing together so yo tengo que comer rápido and you'll see i've got there we've got our two verbs they're combined they're working together have to eat it's all one concept of a verb working together and as i've mentioned to you when we have a combination verb like that with two verbs working together we conjugate the first verb in this case tener is tengo but we don't conjugate the second verb comer it just stays comer that k is in the middle as a glue word and all together that phrase means i have to eat fast so that's how you say to have to in spanish all right here's a second example we have to sing in the concert how would i say that in spanish well nosotros tenemos and then to sing in the concert would be cantar en el concierto and then don't forget the glue word que goes in the middle nosotros tenemos que cantar en el concierto all right now it's time for you to add some to your notes skip a line underneath your chart of tener and let's put a couple of sample sentences here's your template for to have to verb combo sentences in spanish start with tener and add in a que and then the infinitive verb for whatever you have to do and don't forget to conjugate tener write that template down and then underneath it write three sample sentences here we go first sample sentence yo tengo que estudiar notice the tener is conjugated the glue word que is in there and then the infinitive estudiar at the end i have to study here's a second sample for you tu tienes que comer you have to eat and jot down one more sample sentence ustedes tienen que ir a la escuela 
you guys or you all have to go to school. Make sure you get those sample sentences down, which is really good when you're looking back at the notes to see how the words are put together and to have some examples to follow when you're trying to make your own sentences. Pull out your lugares notes, and we're going to add five concepts to your lugares notes, some other places you might go or events you might go to. Here we are. Ir de compras. To go is ir, compras, purchase. Like a, So to go to do purchases. In English, we would say to go shopping. Ir de compras. To go shopping. Ver una película. To watch a movie. Ver una película. Don't forget the accent. La lección de piano. This is another place you might go to. The piano lesson. La lección de piano. Here's a full-on sentence. Me quedo en casa. It means I stay at home. Que quedar is to like remain or even to fit in some cases. So I kind of kind of like I remain myself at home. I stay at home. Me quedo en casa. Just a phrase to remember. I stay at home. And then if I want to talk about going home, I say a casa. For example, yo voy a casa. I'm going home. I'm going to my house, a casa. Now let's add to your utility words. So go back to your utility words and skip a line under the sample sentences that I had you write down. And we're just going to add a few more prepositions and some useful phrases. Okay, a in Spanish, you've already seen it a lot. It means to. So if I want to say I'm going to the store, I would say yo voy a la Tienda, to the store. Now, you would think to say going to a masculine place, so for example, to the gym, gimnasio is masculine, so you would think you would say a el gimnasio, but you're wrong because it actually becomes a contraction. We take a and el and squish them together, and they become al. You've probably seen that around, and maybe you've even wondered, what is al? To the. It's actually a and el, just contracted together into one word. So a el becomes al. So I would say, for example, yo voy al gimnasio. Another one for you. De, of or from. You may have this in your notes already. Just make sure you do. De means of or from. Después de, after. So, for example, después de la escuela, yo voy a casa. After school, I go home. Después de means after. Antes de, this is a toughie. And yes, it means before. Antes de la escuela, yo como el desayuno. Before school, I eat breakfast. Um, you'll recognize that antes is a, has a common root with words like anterior, before or antecedent, the thing that comes before. Even in the words like AM, uh, the A and AM is stands for ante, and the M stands for meridian, like be, before the middle um, of the day, morning in other words. Antes de, before. Después by itself just means afterwards. So I can use it by itself, so for example, um, ¿Cuándo es el baile? When is the dance? Uh, antes o después? El baile es después. The dance is after, afterwards. Con mis amigos, you can probably figure this one out. Con tus amigos, again, I'll bet you can guess it. Notice how mis and tus are plural because amigos is pluralized. So with my friends, with your friends. Solo or sola, there's a nice cognate for you. If you're doing something alone, then you're doing it solo. Solo, alone. Cosa. We've already talked about this, but I like to go over it again and again because it's a very useful word. Thing. Cosa. Thing. Los fines de semana. Well, you know that semana is week. Fin, you might recognize the cognate in words like final or finale. Something that comes at the end. So the ends 
of the week. In other words, weekend. Los fines de semana, weekends. If I want to say something happens on a given day, like yo voy a la lección de piano los lunes, I'm saying I go to, uh, to piano lessons on Mondays. So in Spanish, you don't say en lunes, you say los lunes. Um, so for example, no tengo la escuela los sábados. I don't have school on Saturdays. Tiempo libre. Libre is a cognate with liberty or liberate. Free time. Tiempo libre. That's a P there. Sorry, it's cut off by the picture. Tiempo libre. Generalmente. Remember that mente is the L-Y ending. In English, it's the equivalent to the L-Y ending. So generally is what we're saying here. Generally, overall, generalmente. No me digas. It's a phrase you don't say. Literally, it's don't tell me. But it's kind of like, oh my goodness, you don't say. It's a way to express surprise or shock or, you know, no me digas. You don't say. Para plus infinitivo. So any infinitive verb, if I want to talk about doing it, I can say para. So for example, I might say para estudiar. Yo necesito mis notas. To study, I need my notes. So whenever you're talking about doing something, you want to say to do this or to do that. Para nadar, tú necesitas una piscina. To swim, you need a pool. All right, class, I'm sorry this video was so long. I hope that it makes sense. Please bring your questions and your notes tomorrow to class, and we will practice. Hasta luego.